The Miami Open will relocate from Cranon Park to the Hard Rock Stadium, the home of the Miami Dolphins, in 2019. The small island of Key Biscayne will be remembered as one of the most iconic locations on the ATP World Tour. Picturesque scenery and beaches and the unique player activities will certainly live on. Who can forget the Miami Sea Aquarium, which welcomed generation of ATP stars? Miami, one of the most culturally diverse cities in the United States, is known to have some of the loudest and most passionate fans in tennis. From Gustavo Cuerton to Marcelo Rios and more recently Juan Martín del Potro, the tournament will undoubtedly continue to provide its Latin flair. But after 32 incredible years on Key Biscayne, there are plenty of memorable moments to reflect on. In 1989, Thomas Muster defeated Yannick Noah in the semifinals, putting him into the top 10 of the rankings for the first time. But hours after his win over Noah, the 21-year-old Muster was struck by a drunk driver, severing ligaments in his knee and forcing him to default against Ivan Lendl in the final. The Austrian found his redemption eight years later in the 1997 final when he defeated Sergei Bruguera. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1997 Lipton Men's Singles Champion, Mr. Thomas Muster. In 1994, Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi were all set to meet in the Miami Open final. It would be the ninth of their 32 career encounters. But the match was delayed for an hour because of Pete Sampras having a stomach ailment. There was a time earlier today when it looked like he may not play. And indeed, the question is whether he's going to get through this match. Agassi, seeking his second title in Miami, agreed to the delay, even though the rules permitted him to win in a walkover when Sampras was unable to take the court at the scheduled time. Andre Agassi said, if I can't beat the number one player in the world, I don't deserve the trophy. And if I can't beat him when he's sick, I certainly don't deserve it. The loss to Sampras in the final in 1994 would light a fire underneath Andre Agassi. The Las Vegas native went on to dominate Crandon Park over the next nine years, reaching six finals and winning five titles. Agassi is tied for the most singles titles in Miami Open history with Novak Djokovic. The Serbian won his first big title at Crandon Park back in 2007 and won five more titles between 2011 and 2016. The Serb also has the most sunshine doubles, winning Indian Wells in Miami back-to-back -back a record four times. And finally, Key Biscayne will always be the home to the birth of one of the most iconic rivalries in the history of the ATP World Tour, Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal. The tournament featured the pair's first two career meetings on the ATP World Tour. The first dating back to 2004 when a 17-year-old Nadal defeated world number one Roger Federer. Roger got revenge the following year in the final, besting Nadal in five hard-fought sets. The two have gone on to meet 38 times on the ATP World Tour, with Nadal leading the head-to-head 23-15. -head, with plenty of memories to reflect on, 2019 will be a great stepping stone for the future of the Miami Open. And this week, there was a sneak peek into the Miami Open's future at next year's venue, the Hard Rock Stadium. We've been in Key Biscayne and Miami for over 30 years. Miami Open is really a, a staple and institution here in South Florida. And we've been trying to make a lot of improvements, investments in the stadium and the whole customer fan experience around the Miami Open. But because of certain uh, laws and bylaws and former owners of the land, really we were thwarted from doing that. And we were looking for another option. I have all this land. I got a great location. How do I you know, capitalize and utilize that? I think now we show them a, a layout and it really works. And it has all these different amenities that they don't have at other places. They're all built in here. Most people get very restricted when they become a touring director. They have you know, financial concerns, they have space concerns. I have the opposite problem. Mine is going to be what can we expand, what can we do, how can we make this better, how can we make all these improvements, which is going to make me very popular in the locker room. Next year I think it's going to be so amazing for people to see what's been done and how much progress has been made in just one year. That it, Not that Grandin Park will ever be forgotten because it's going to be so historical for the sport of tennis, but people will be appreciative of the changes that are made. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered. Benito ATP finals are edging closer. 
So who are the early contenders as the race to London heats up? And welcome to Sarajevo. Damage Umer takes us on a tour of his home city in Bosnia. Don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com, which features more from the live blog in Miami, and chat with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.